Welcome to Hydrohaven, where we believe that transforming lifeless dirt into rich, fertile soil shouldn't require backbreaking labor or expensive store-bought amendments. After years of experimenting with different soil restoration techniques, I've perfected what I call the minimal effort, maximum impact approach to soil revival. In today's guide, I'll share exactly how to breathe life back into your garden's most depleted areas, using methods that work with nature rather than against it, along with three powerful nitrogen-fixing plants that do the hard work for you. These techniques have transformed countless dead zones in my own garden, and they can do the same for yours with just a fraction of the effort you might expect. Before jumping into revival techniques, it's important to recognize what we're dealing with. Dead soil typically feels hard and compacted when dry, forms crusty surfaces, lacks the earthy smell of healthy soil, and shows little to no evidence of earthworms or other soil life. Plants growing in dead soil often appear stunted with yellowing leaves and poor root development. Most importantly, dead soil lacks the complex soil food web, the billions of microorganisms that break down organic matter and make nutrients available to plants. Our lazy revival approach focuses on re-establishing this living ecosystem rather than just adding chemicals. The cornerstone of lazy soil restoration is sheet mulching, a no-dig approach that mimics how forests naturally build soil. Start by laying down a layer of cardboard or several sheets of newspaper directly over your dead soil area. Wet this layer thoroughly to begin the decomposition process and prevent it from blowing away. The cardboard serves multiple purposes. It smothers existing weeds, attracts earthworms who love to feed on it, and creates a dark, moist environment where soil life can begin to thrive. On top of your wet cardboard layer, add a 2-3 to three inch layer of compost or well-rotted manure. This doesn't need to be premium stuff. Even partially decomposed compost works fine as it contains the microorganisms needed to kickstart your soil's revival. Next, add a 4-6 to six inch layer of organic mulch material. Straw, leaves, grass clippings, or wood chips all work well. This top layer protects your developing soil from erosion, temperature extremes, and moisture loss, while slowly decomposing to feed your emerging soil ecosystem. The beauty of sheet mulching is that you can plant into it immediately. For seeds or small transplants, create pockets of compost through all layers down to the original soil. For larger transplants, cut an X in the cardboard and add extra compost to the planting hole. As these layers break down over the next 6 to 12 months, your dead soil will be transformed from below without any digging on your part. To accelerate your soil's revival, introduce beneficial microorganisms through a simple homemade microbial inoculant. Collect a handful of soil from a healthy part of your garden or a nearby thriving natural area. This soil already contains the diverse microorganisms your dead soil needs. Mix this healthy soil with a gallon of water and a tablespoon of unsulfured molasses, which feeds the microbes and helps them multiply. Let this mixture sit for 24 hours, stirring occasionally, then use it to thoroughly soak your sheet mulched area. Another effortless way to introduce beneficial microbes is through worm castings. Simply spread a thin layer of worm castings between your compost and mulch layers when sheet mulching. These castings contain not only plant-available nutrients but also living microorganisms that help re-establish your soil's food web. Don't worry about perfect distribution. Even small amounts of these microbial starter cultures will spread throughout your soil as conditions improve. Perhaps the laziest soil improvement method is to let plants do the work for you. Nitrogen-fixing plants form partnerships with specialized bacteria that convert atmospheric nitrogen, which plants can't use, into forms that directly feed your garden. Here are three exceptional nitrogen fixers for different situations. Clover serves as the perfect living mulch between garden rows or as a fall cover crop. White Dutch clover stays low, about 4 to 8 inches, making it ideal for pathways, while red clover reaches around 18 inches and produces beautiful flowers that attract pollinators. Beyond fixing nitrogen, Clover's dense root system breaks up compacted soil while its continuous ground cover suppresses weeds. Simply broadcast seeds over moistened soil at around one quarter pound per 1,000 square feet, then walk over them to ensure good soil contact. Fava beans work double duty by fixing substantial nitrogen while providing a food crop. Unlike many beans, favas thrive in cool weather, making them perfect for fall planting in most regions. Their robust roots penetrate deep into compacted soil creating channels for air and water movement. When harvest is complete, cut plants at soil level, rather than pulling them up. This leaves the nitrogen-rich root nodules in the soil where they'll decompose and release their stored nitrogen for future crops. 
Alfalfa, though typically thought of as animal feed, is actually one of the most powerful soil-building plants available. Its remarkable taproot can extend 15 feet or more into subsoil, breaking through compaction layers that mechanical tillage can't reach. Meanwhile, its surface roots host bacteria that fix exceptional amounts of nitrogen. Alfalfa also mines calcium, phosphorus, potassium, and trace minerals from deep soil layers, bringing these nutrients to the surface as its leaves decompose. The final component of lazy soil restoration is perhaps the most important, patience. True soil regeneration happens on nature's timeline, not ours. While you'll likely see improvements within months, completely transforming dead soil into rich, living earth can take one to three seasons depending on your starting conditions. The good news? This approach requires less ongoing work from you as time passes, not more. By embracing these lazy soil revival techniques, and letting nitrogen-fixing plants do the heavy lifting, you're not cutting corners, you're actually working with natural processes rather than against them. The result is truly sustainable soil improvement that builds upon itself year after year with decreasing input from you. If you found these lazy soil revival methods helpful, please subscribe to our Hydro Haven channel for more effortless gardening wisdom throughout the seasons. Share this video with fellow gardeners who need to know that bringing life back to their soil doesn't have to be a back-breaking endeavor. Until next time, happy growing the lazy way.